sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL 25. We are just about 10 miles south of downtown. You get a look inside NRG Stadium in Houston, the home of the Texans. Good to be in the booth with Greg Olson. I'm Mike Tirico. Greg, this is a passing league. You know that from your days. It's evolved even more into a game in the air. And boy, do we have a couple of quarterbacks who know all about moving their team via the pass. Yeah, and I think we're going to see this ball thrown early and often throughout the game. And anyone who loves offensive football, this is certainly a treat. And you said it, Mike. This league has turned more and more with each passing season into a passing league. If you can't throw, if you can't generate points through the air and explosive plays, it is going to be very difficult to compete and win week in and week out in today's modern NFL. Well, kicker Tyler Bass has us ready to start. And off we go from Houston. On the return, it's Damian Pierce. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The Texans come out with the Rookie of the Year from last year in the NFL. C.J. Stroud, he was the number two overall pick out of Ohio State. Greg, a talented quarterback here. If there's going to be a poster child for just how flawed the pre-draft process can be at times, I think this guy's at the top. I mean, just think, last year, people are nitpicking him going into his rookie year. He can't do this. He can't do that. And what does he do? He comes out and has arguably the greatest rookie quarterback season in NFL history, not only bringing his franchise back to life, but really establishing himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the entire league. And he's going to get this to the 37-yard line. Every once in a while, it just comes down to you need somebody in the huddle to just make a play. And it wasn't a whole lot fancy here. The quarterback just dumps the ball down, a quick underneath completion. And then really, it's the yards after catch that did the rest. And that's what it takes. You're not always going to have the perfect play. You're not always going to dial up the perfect play against the perfect look. Sometimes players need to make plays. And that was a good one there. They'll break the huddle. It's second and five. Schultz is the motion man. On play action. Stroud. They try to use that size to push forward, but it's not going to work. Defense strong up front. And they're going to get him down behind the line of scrimmage. This is a guy that we're used to seeing make a lot of his plays in the back end. Mike kind of patrolling that center field safety position. But this time... He recognized that play up at the line of scrimmage, and he blows it up for a loss. From the shotgun, C.J. Stroud. He'll get this over the middle to Diggs. Call it a gain of 13. It's good for a Texans first down. They've done a nice job spreading the ball around. Make the defense have to account for as many different weapons as possible here early. I think back to our conversation with this coaching staff, Mike. They identified this guy as someone they needed to get involved early and often. So that might be his first target. I don't think it's going to be his last. They'll run with Mixon. And this will be a short pickup down to the 45. Christian Benford brings him down. Now after the run, we get a stoppage for an injured player. The training staff going to look and we'll step out for a moment. Here's second and six. From the gun, here's Stroud. Open man downfield, it's Nico Collins. A pickup of 21 on that connection. First down for Houston. It's like a textbook 
methodical, efficient NFL drive. Four for four, throwing the ball, mixing in some run. You're just marching the ball downfield at your will, and they get a fresh set of downs now to see if they can convert this nice drive into some points. In order for you to be able to operate out of this 4-3 style defense, Mike, the key is your defensive tackles, their ability to penetrate, their ability to be game wreckers. That's exactly what we saw here, his ability to get back there, make the stop at the line of scrimmage, keep it to no game. A second down throw for Stroud. That's caught. It's Joe Mixon. There's a lot of ways to get the ball in the hands of your running backs, and it's not always by just handing it to them. In this case, it's a simple check down, picks up a good game, brings up third down. Ninth play of this opening drive, trying to keep it going here on third down. They'll go play action with Stroud. That one taken in. Touchdown, Texans. A terrific way to start this one. Not only a touchdown, but a nice long march down the field. Makes it a long walk back to the bench for the defense. Mike, that's about as good as you can imagine starting a game offensively. To be able to sustain that many plays and be able to cap it off with a touchdown. That is a dream start for this offense. Now, Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. He gets it to go, and the Texans will take a 7-0 lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. On the return, it's Ty Johnson. And he'll be brought down right around the 25-yard line. So out come the Bills and the face of the franchise. 28-year-old Josh Allen. Year seven already with Buffalo. The last four years, over 4,000 passing yards in each. The man who makes this team go. I feel like every time I watch him, I come away with this, like, throwback feel. I mean, the way he plays the position, he is not going to look to slide. He is not looking to avoid contact. He kind of plays this game like it was played years ago at the quarterback position. And I'm like, let's be honest. It's very easy to do it when you're usually one of the biggest guys in the field, the fastest guys in the field, and has the biggest arm. So the physical traits allow him to play that style, but... He is just a blast to watch and somebody you can just tell truly loves playing the game. Marquez Valdez scantling the one he was looking for. And it'll bring up second down. They run with the third year man. It's James Cook. Trying to find some place to go, but nothing developing. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of one. Great job by that linebacker timing his blitz. He didn't give any indication to the offense that he was coming. And he's able to get through that hole and take the ball carrier down for a loss. On third down, it's Allen. He dives, and what a catch for the first down. That one good for 15 and a first down. You just love to see this effort, especially on third down. You understand, you want to keep this possession alive. You have to do everything in your power sometimes to bail out your quarterback, and it's exactly what he does here, and it brings up a fresh set of downs. Allen, going to give it to Cook. And he'll get about six there, setting up second down. Motion the slot man left. 
from the shotgun. It's Allen. That's to the left side and taken in by Coleman. He's still on his feet. Trying to get to that pylon. Not there, but very close. They'll mark him out at the one. Big time play there for Buffalo. 53 yards. Well, they've come out swinging here on this opening drive through the air, and that's exactly what they wanted to do. Generate some early chunk plays and try to get some points. This opening drive, it has been a work of art. Now, can they put the finishing touches on? It's first and goal. Allen. To the goal line and in. Dawson Knox. Touchdown, Bills. And what a response by this offense. It's not easy taking the field, Mike, for the first time in the game, and you find yourself already down a score. They watch their opponent kind of march down the field and score on the opening possession, and they're able now to go out and square it on up. Allows you to take a deep breath, maybe get a little confidence for your defense to go out and get a stop, and they come over with this extra point. We got ourselves a tie ball game. Tyler Bass now for the extra point. He's got it. And the Bills come right back to tie it at seven. Each team one possession, each team a score. 7-7 as they kick it off. Here's Pierce for the return. Now an opening past the 30. And they'll be set up well as he is past the 35-yard line. The Texans offense ready now for their second drive. We'll try to break out of this deadlock. We are all even at 7 as they start this drive first and 10. Three tight ends in the game to start the drop. On first down, they'll start with Mixon. A nice pickup, moving it across the 40. We'll give them six on that play. They'll come up now for second down and four. To throw it's Stroud. That's into the hands of Diggs. And they'll have it across midfield down at the opposing 46 yard line. These curl routes. He's been running these routes since he was a young kid in Pop Warner football. And I like to call it pulling the string. You've got the defender thinking you're going downfield and you stick that foot in the ground. Work back to the quarterback, friendly to the ball, and really nice job picking up the first down. A touchdown apiece here in the first quarter of play. All even on the scoreboard. And more from Houston coming up in a moment. Here's first and ten. Off the play fake. Here's Stroud. He runs with it. Stroud avoids the contact as he slides to a stop after picking up the first down. A first down there on a pickup of 17. A quarterback who can extend the play with his legs, Mike, is just such a key element to today's modern offenses. You can see there was nowhere for him to go with the ball, but he decides to turn into a runner, picks up a great game, and ultimately the first down. And he's going to take this all the way home. Joe Mixon. Touchdown, Houston. When you start talking about the qualities of a top tier back in the NFL, Mike, we all talk about size, speed, the ability to keep your feet, the ability to have balance at contact. 
But the part we don't talk enough about is patience, understanding the blocking scheme, the timing, when to hit the hole, as much as what hole to hit. And I think you get a great example of what that looks like when it all comes together. He takes advantage of the scheme, and next thing you know, he hits his head on the goalpost. Now Fairbairn for the extra point. He knocks it through, and the Texans will move out to a 14-7 lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. Johnson now to return. And he'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. The Bills offense ready to see what they can do on their second possession. They trail now 14-7 as they'll come up for first and 10. From the gun, it's Allen. This one brought in by Curtis Samuel. That's a nice pickup on a first down throw. It's a gain of eight. They'll come to the line now on second and two. A run out of the gun with Cook. And they get this one across midfield to the 47-yard line. And a nice pickup there by the back with an explosive run play. And it's important to point out, Mike, his offensive play caller, he's still working off that opening script. It doesn't necessarily have to just be the first possession. Using formations, using run game and pass. Unmask the defense and understand where to take the play calling as the game unfolds. Off the play fake, here's Allen. That's over the middle and intercepted. It's the safety, Jalen Petrie. You know, Mike, anytime a team can go nickel or dime and come off the field with an interception, I just am constantly reminded of the importance of defensive back depth when you're building an NFL roster. I mean, think back. This is not the old NFL base 3-4, base 4-3. Offenses are going to roll out two, three, four high-level wide receivers at you in this pass-first modern era. If you can't roll out five DBs and all of them hold their own and be trusted to hold up, you are going to struggle defending these pass-first modern offenses. They'll come up first and 10 at the 40. Stroud going to tuck this one on the zone read. And he maneuvers his way forward, a gain of six. Good decision by the quarterback. In this situation, all you're looking to do is have a positive play. He decides to pull it, and that's exactly what he's able to do. They'll work now on second and four. Out of the gun, here's a give to Mixon. It's a short pickup, taking this to the 49. Taron Johnson up to make the tackle. They'll look to pick this up, third and a yard. Here's Stroud. He's got his man. It's Diggs. And he will score. Touchdown, Texans. 
his second touchdown of this first half. A terrific job all the way around, especially after the catch, Greg, to take it to the end zone for a touchdown. I'm just so impressed by the acceleration of this receiver, Mike. He catches what is a short pass, and he's able to turn it up the field and take it all the way for six. That is an impressive play, run after catch. Fair Bear to add the extra point. It's up and good. And the Texans will take a 21-7 lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. From the six, here comes a return. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The Bills offense getting set to get back to work. They trail by two touchdowns, so the time is now. Got to get that rally going. It starts with first and ten. start on the ground with Cook. He'll be stopped after a pickup of about three. Halen Bullock there on the tackle. Second and seven. Out of the gun, here's Allen. Oh, he's going to be bottled up and taken down. They got him. So after picking up some positive yardage on first down, they end up going backwards on second. That sack now brings up third and long, and what most of the time is a very pass-happy situation makes them very one-dimensional. So backed up after the sack, and now it's third and long. From the gut, Gazelle. And that is incomplete. Just doesn't seem to me right now that he's seeing the field very well. I mean, that last possession results in the pick. You'd expect him to come back out here and be a little bit more careful with the ball, find easier completions, find the better matchup. And instead, he puts the ball back in harm's way, and he's lucky that wasn't another interception. Sims now to return it. And he's going to be brought down after a short return. And that's where his team will get possession of the football. Stephon Diggs and the rest of the Houston offense set to take over again. And seemingly every time they've looked his way in the first half, it's resulted in a big play that is borne out by those eye-popping numbers. Set to go now on first and ten. Now, Stroud. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Here in the first half, we've seen nothing but connections from these two guys. I mean, they've come out completely on fire. So the defense finally gets a stop. And really the first time we've seen these guys be a little bit off. Mixon has the first down and more. And they're going to work this down inside the 45. 
first down pickup by Mixon, and he's one of the Texans' many additions this offseason. It's pretty incredible to think, Mike, in only his second year as the head coach, the roster that D'Amico Ryans continues to assemble. Not only is Mixon still a productive back in his own right, but he should take a lot of pressure off C.J. Stroud. That's complete. It's Tank Dell. This may look like a simple connection, Mike, just pitch and catch, but I can promise you the amount of time these two guys have spent together on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, just getting on the same page, seeing the game through the same set of eyes, it makes what's pretty difficult seem a lot easier. Two minutes remain here in this first half. Greg and I back from Houston in a moment. An enviable spot to operate from. Here's second in inches. Back to throw. Stroud. That'll be taken in by Mixon. He is in. Joe Mixon. Touchdown, Houston. That is second touchdown of the afternoon. And the show continues. What a first half he's had, Greg. A third touchdown pass with that one. Mike, what stood out to me the most so far is just the amount of space these guys have had to operate in. I think if I'm this defensive coordinator, me and my staff at halftime are revisiting this game plan. They obviously felt good about it coming in, but I don't think there's anything to feel good about thus far. Now Fairbairn for the extra point. His kick is good. And the Texans add on one more as they extend their second quarter lead. And so after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. Johnson now to return. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. So now here comes the Buffalo offense heading back out onto the field. They find themselves down three touchdowns here, needing to flip the script in a hurry. And they'll start it here on first down. It's Allen. That's brought in by the tight end, Knox. And he's down inside the 40-yard line. Those are the explosive pass plays that this team is going to continue to mine all day. And you can see pre-snap, the quarterback loved his matchup. He allowed his receiver to work downfield. Perfect throw, and now sets them up to try to see if they can finish this drive off with some points. Ball rests at the 37. It's first and 10. They send him right out of the slot. They'll throw on first down with Allen. It'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. They face second down and seven. To throw is Allen. He's looking deep for Shakir. And the Texans will take over at their own 14-yard line. When you find yourself in this situation, you're on defense. You're defending your own goal line. you got to take some chances. you got to try to force a turnover and make a play and get off the field. That's exactly what this defender did. Takes a chance, bets on himself, and comes away with a pick to save them some points. 
Texans offense and running back Joe Mixon heading out onto the field. They'll begin inside their own 15-yard line, so a lot of real estate to cover. It's first and 10. Stroud to throw. He'll look deep here for Diggs. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. How often do we see teams kind of nurse these big leads, Mike, especially as the game unfolds? They turn to the ground game. They try to slow everything down. Well, not this offense. They refuse to take their foot off the gas. They're still mining for explosive plays. And frankly, with the way today's gone, I don't blame them. The Texans going to go ahead and use their first time out here. They stop it here with just under 40 seconds until halftime. Here's third and two. From the shotgun, C.J. Stroud. He's got his man right side. It's complete. And he'll be brought down, but not before they get this all the way up near midfield. They'll come up here first and ten. From the gun, here's Stroud. In trouble, and he's going to be taken down. Defense came out in a soft zone, and I think it caught the quarterback a little off guard. He was trying to attack them downfield. By the time he was able to get through his progression to his check down, he ran out of time, and that's all the pass rush needed to get into the backfield and bring him down. Work to do now as they come up on second and long. To throw is Stroud. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Nice example there, Mike, of the quarterback just being smart with the ball, understanding it didn't quite develop the way he had intended. Throw that ball out of harm's way, live to play another down. Third and long. Give running right. It is Mixon. The Bills going to use the first of their timeouts as that'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So fourth down, and it's the former Chief Tommy Townsend to punt for Houston. turn forthcoming it's a touchback and will come out to the 20 yard line and they'll elect not to run another play instead just take a knee and take this on into the locker room so we reach halftime in what has been to this point a one-sided game. As we'll head over to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He has the EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Michael, thanks very much. And with that, we welcome you all into our EA Sports studios. This is the Halftime Report. It was a terrific first half from the former Offensive Rookie of the Year, C.J. Stroud. He connected on three touchdown passes in those first two quarters. 
as his guys have built up a sizable lead here at the break. Coach, thank you. Back here on EA Sports as we count down to the kickoff of the second half. Very one-sided first half of action. Will we get a turnaround? Let's find out. The third quarter is underway. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. The Bills offense ready to get going again. They'll have it first in this third quarter. They are in need of points in a big way as they set out on first and 10. Play action. It's Allen. He's going to tuck it and go. And he'll be taken down up at the 40-yard line. You know, Mike, I like everything about this play except the very end. You've already picked up good yardage. You've already picked up the first down. Now get down on the ground and protect yourself. There's no reason to take those shots. They'll break the huddle. Coming up now for first and 10. In motion, Shakir. into space at the 45 and he'll be taken down now the give to Cook running right Here's a second and nine. Throwing is Allen. That's taken in by Shakir. And that'll go for a gain of seven. And it's going to set up third down. Oh, there's movement up front. That's going to make this third down a lot tougher. So, from third and two, back him up to third and seven. Now, Allen. And this is going to be incomplete. That's great work to get in there and make things difficult defensively, setting up a fourth down. There's only a handful of guys in the league who legitimately have world-class speed, and he's one of them. I mean, he's the type of weapon that you three or four times a game have to just say, okay, my guy, he's faster than your guy. We're going to send him deep and let it fly. And even though that one falls incomplete, you have to continue to sprinkle that threat in because it makes everything else in your passing game that much easier. C.J. Stroud and the Houston offense set to get going again. And we show you some of the highlights, and there have been plenty to choose from. Three touchdown passes and some other big-time throws as well. Certainly dialed in and on top of his game right throughout this one. The drive begins at the 20. Here's first and 10. Throwing is Stroud. Trying the right side. Take it in by Collins. This pitch and catch may have looked routine, but I promise you, Mike, these types of anticipatory throws, especially outside the numbers, they don't occur without countless reps, oftentimes when nobody's even watching.
on play action. Stroud. And he got rid of that one quickly before the receiver even knew what was going on. That's incomplete. Tank Dell was the one he was looking for. And it'll be third down. A rare miss for a quarterback that we've seen really come out on fire throughout this entire contest. I mean, his completion percentage, Mike, is well above league average. And frankly, it's really the biggest reason why they find themselves out in front. That's complete to Diggs. And he will have the first down. The drive will continue after a pickup of eight. Nothing a quarterback loves more, Mike, than being able to pick up a first down without being forced to push the ball downfield and force it past the line to gain. He settles for the underneath check down. He's confident that his receiver is going to pick up the rest after the catch. So it'll be first and 10. They'll scrimmage at the 33. Stroud. Oh, and a short throw there, but it's going to end up incomplete. That's a pass he say he should have had. Instead, he does not, and it brings up second down. He decides to go with the safe throw and throws it well short of the sticks. And at this level, Mike, you just can't miss layups like that. A second down throw for Stroud. They try to work the screen with Nixon. And they'll hold him to a gain of just a couple and sets up third down. Just a little slow developing on that screenplay there. It was pretty obvious to the entire defense exactly what was going on. Nobody was thinking pass. Nobody was getting back into their drops and just nowhere for that back to go. From the gun here on third down, it's Stroud. He's going to pick up the first down and more. And he will go all the way. Take down. Touchdown, Texans. Third down. My focus, Greg, was on picking up the first down. Forget that. They go down the field and in the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, and I don't think it was just your focus, Mike. I think in this case, it was the defense's focus. They're so worried about where that first down marker was that they allowed them to get that ball up and over the top for the deep strike touchdown. Bear Bear to add the extra point. The kick is good. And the Texans will extend this third quarter lead. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn to kick it off. A safe kick taken at the five. And the good kick pays off. We'll only be able to take this past the 10-yard line. The Bills offense makes their way back out to the field for their next possession. They'll start it here with a first and 10. From the gun, it's Allen. A pass caught right side by Coleman. These are the type of plays that drive a coach crazy in the film room, and you have to learn as a quarterback to avoid. You can take some chances. You can push the ball downfield, but not only to pick up a couple yards. You got to pick your chances of when you want to be aggressive, and you got to make sure you make better decisions going forward. From the shotgun, it's Allen. They go right back to Coleman. He's got it again. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. Similar to a tight end, the slot receiver is often considered the safety blanket. He makes all the difficult catches, tends to be a little bit more around the line of scrimmage. And so far today, he's certainly lived up to that reputation. 
Now Allen on first down. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. For the most part, he's been very accurate with the ball. I mean, he's completing over 60% of his passes, but because they haven't been able to get any big explosive plays, continue to push the ball downfield, hasn't really translated on the scoreboard just yet. Again, it's Allen to the air. Samuel has it working the middle. It'll get about six before he's taken down. Here's a third down and four. Throwing again. It's Allen. Open man left side. He's got it. And he's going to have the first down. So they convert on third down with a pickup of nine. Nice pickup here to the back. And what really stands out about this drive is the ability of the quarterback to really spread the ball around to multiple targets and put so much pressure on the defense deciding who do they want to account for because no matter who they try to take away quarterback's doing a nice job of finding the open man and they're going to track him down he couldn't find a receiver and down he goes Hunter wasn't going to be denied on that one Mike and here's a guy that even though he's found a new home here in Houston and what can we say about this defense that Tamika Ryans continues to put together but he continues to produce at the same level we've come to expect from him 16 and a half sacks a year ago, and he adds another one right here. On the handoff, this is Cook. And it'll be brought down as we tick towards the end of this third quarter. So, three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Third and long. Out of the gun, here's Allen. Now a shot. Downfield for Samuel. And the Texans are going to have it just past their 25. You know, Mike, what I think is interesting is we had a chance to sit down with this young player this week leading up to today's game, and he kind of felt to both of us that he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. He fell to the second round on draft night. In his mind, he thought he was a first-rounder. But I'll tell you what, whatever round he was drafted in, if he keeps making plays like this... There's going to be a lot of teams who are going to be kicking themselves for skipping over him on draft night. The Texans offense ready to get back at it. And as we look back at some of the highlights of this one, Greg, definitely a lot to show from the passing game. Yeah, and as good as the offense feels about their passing game, I think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you've got a lot of learning to do because you just get burned time and time again. You'd think at some point you'd make an adjustment and make a correction. So at this point, they've given up four touchdown passes. You're just not going to win a lot of games in the NFL giving up that production in one phase of the game. A fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. They'll begin on the ground, and here's Mixon. Has an opening. Has the 40. Now after the run, we get a stoppage for an injured player. That not a welcome development here late in a one-sided game. first down they keep it on the ground and they keep it with Mixon not much happening there just a short game
Here's second and nine. The give to Mixon from out of the pistol. And nothing on that one back to the line of scrimmage. And that is it. So often when it comes to safeties, Mike, we talk about their speed and their range. But for him to be able to come up and make a tackle and be physical at the point of attack and keep this ball carrier to no gain, that's pretty impressive. On third down, they'll set up to throw. And he gets that one complete to Collins. Outbreaking routes, Mike, especially outside of the numbers, everything is about the timing. If you're late with the throw, you're going to be watching that defensive back take that thing the other way for six. The Texans getting all set to punt. He's on for the second time. He'll try to get something inside the 10. So Allen and the Bills getting set for their next possession. And the turnovers have really been the story here. Take you back through the high, or actually the low lights in this one. Not a lot of positives when you have a three interception game under pressure all game long. The secondary feasting on his passes. On first down, it's Allen. Oh, the struggles continue. Another interception. That's the linebacker, Aziz Alshire. Well, Mike, once again, this drive, it ends the same way their last one did, walking off the field, following an interception. Now, you're hoping this is more momentary struggle than it is a trend, but as hard as it is to do, they need to get calmed down. They need to reset because their offense cannot operate at a high level if they don't have confidence in this passing game. The Texans offense and their running back getting ready to go back to work. They start with the lead and the football. They do so with tremendous field position. It's first and 10. Mixon. They'll go play action with Stroud. Oh, a lot of chances on that one. It was bouncing around, but it falls incomplete. He was looking for Stephon Diggs there. Now it's going to be third down. I think this defense is wondering where some of these missed throws were earlier in the game. I mean, for a while, it seemed like everything the offense did hit. And after that last incomplete pass, although this game's all but over, this defense will certainly take it. Fourth down, and on comes Kaimi Fairbairn for the Houston field goal. This one from 41 yards out. Fairbairn's kick is good. And the Texans will extend their lead. I think at this point in the game, Mike, when you have things under control, not only were they able to hold on to the ball for a while, they still were able to manage to add three points. Fairbairn, after making the field goal, 
Heads back out to kick this one away. This one taken at the seven. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The visitors' offense ready to come back out for this next possession. Interesting point here, Greg. This is one of those where, put me in the mind of the play caller. Uh, are you thinking just keep the ball on the ground right now? I think it's hard. I think a lot of it has to do with how much confidence do you have that he can work himself through it because as the turnovers continue to stack up, your biggest fear is that the confidence breaks down. So a lot of this is really just how well do you understand what kind of relationship do you have with your quarterback. If you think you can get him through it, keep putting the ball in his hands. If you think he's done for the day, you got a big question you got to answer whether he should even be in the game. They'll throw on first down with Allen. Samuel, there to make the catch. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. Second down and three. Play clock down to zero. That's going to be a delay. Now, Allen. They go sideline, and he stays in bounds. Got the feet down in time. It's a first down. They'll get a new set of downs. It's a gain of 19. So they come to the line for first down and 10. They go play action now. Here's Allen. To the sideline, and what a catch, and what a great job to keep the feet alive. Inbounds as good as you can do it. He had their lone touchdown of the game earlier, and he comes through with the catch and a first down in this spot. One more time going up top with Allen. And he's brought down after a gain of six on first down. They'll come up now for second down and four. To throw again, it's Allen. He's got that complete to Knox. He's got a touchdown on the books from earlier, and that catch gets him a first down. Now, this is the epitome of a really short throw and a really nice run after catch. And listen, for a quarterback, it all counts the same. You don't always have to throw the ball downfield to generate explosive plays, and these drag routes can be very, very effective. Allen going to throw again. That's brought in by the tight end, Knox. And he's brought down after a gain of six on first down. When you put plays like this on tape, it sends a message to every defender across the league. When you play this offense and this guy has the ball, you better bring it when you come to contact him, because if not, you're going to be on the wrong end of it. A run with Cook. And he will dive into the end zone. James Cook, touchdown Buffalo. Well, it's not going to be enough, but at least they find the end zone at the end of a hard week's work. At least it'll pay off with a touchdown, Greg. Mike, you can just chalk this one up in the column of too little, too late. Give credit to this offense for not going down without a fight, but they're not going to have enough time to find themselves back in this one. Here's Bass now for the extra point. The kick is good. And the Bills are able to cut into the deficit.
Down three scores, and it's late. They're going to need a few bounces to go their way. They'll start right here, trying to get an onside kick. You have no choice. You find yourself down big here late in the fourth quarter, Mike. You got nothing to lose. Give it a shot. Nice job here by the hands team recovering. They're going to take over possession. The home team's offense and C.J. Stroud ready to get to work once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been successful. He just processes things so quickly, making the right read seemingly every time. Three tight ends in the game to start the drive. They'll run on first down with Mixon. So when you're evaluating the impact of a team's run game, Mike, I think it's important at the end of the game to look back and say, okay, how many yards did they run for? But more importantly, when did those yards come? Did I run for those yards in the fourth quarter, which typically means I had to lead? That's the sign of a successful run game as opposed to getting a lot of meaningless yards early in the game. Again, they'll give it to Mixon. With good blocking leading the way, he's got the first down inside the 25. So, two minutes to play here in the second half. We'll come back and finish this one off after this. It's a three tight end look as they have it first and ten. They will work the middle with Mixon. And some space opens as he's brought down following a gain of six. They'll work now on second and four. We have a tight end motioning left here. They will not get this one off. It'll be a delay of game. the option they give it to Mixon he'll pop this ahead for about four but it will set up third down some problems communicating on third down and that's going to be a delay so a much more difficult scenario now it is third and ten a run here with Mixon Jamie Fairbairn coming on to try the field goal. This one will be from 37 yards out. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the Texans add on to their lead. So it's a win here for the Texans. And right away you can point to the turnover battle. Always he tells the story so often. It did here again today. Their offense didn't turn it over at all. They finished on the plus side with the takeaways. As a result, they're going to come away with the victory. So that'll just about do it for Greg Olson and our entire team. I'm Mike Tirico. 
You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Texans, as we say, so long from Houston.